Hi, Robert Bonavito here, New Jersey Forensic Accountant. Today we're going to talk about financial statement fraud and the Benice M score. Now, what is the Benice M score? We're going to go into that into detail. But first, guys, hey, listen, if you do like this video, please smash the like sign. Appreciate it. It helps. But um, financial statement fraud is sometimes overlooked because it's very important. And the reason it's so important is that lots of people rely on financial statements. Investors rely on financial statements. Market analysts rely on financial statements. And creditors rely on financial statements. Now, if you if companies listed on the stock exchange, okay, people are training those based on financial statements. And um, if those financial statements are not correct um, and people can't rely on them, the whole economy would crash. Think about how important they are. And that's why uh, when financial statements are issued, the, the, uh, the CPAs have to sign off on the management and, you know, uh, if they don't, it's considered fraud. But there still are fraudulent financial statements in there. Let's, what's interesting, too, is I'm going to do this video. This article came out in the Wall Street Journal uh, a couple weeks back, and they're talking about the uh, Benny's, uh, you know, methodology for detecting fraud. And... This, what they did was, okay, accounting fraud indicates signals coming economic troubles. What they did was they analyzed the New York Exchange like stock market uh, financial statements, and usually about 3% of financial statements have fraud. Uh, sometimes it will go up to 5%. And, and once it goes, with this article, what they're saying is once they applied this, um, the Benny's financial, you know, score, it went up to over five. There's usually a recession the next year. And the reason for this is because companies are struggling and they're creating fraud so that, you know, they can keep uh, the stock price up and, and, and help, uh, you know, I guess get some bonuses or something like that. But you can see what happens here is once the, the fraud increases to a certain level, there's usually a recession. Okay. Um, and right now, look, in, in 2022, <laughs> there's a lot of fraud out there. It's over 5%. So this is a pretty interesting uh, calculation, which we're going to go into. Now, if you look at um, uh, people who rely on financial statements, okay, um, it's really, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of people, but we're always being retained to look at financial statements. Uh, banks are retaining us. Uh, investors are retaining us. People who are doing mergers are retaining us. And the best way to tell if those financial statements are accurate is to do a ratio analysis. We love to do ratio analysis. Now, ratio analysis is a pretty basic concept, but to actually do it the right way, analyze it, and interpret it, there's, only, there's not a lot of people can do that. And we always start off with financial ratio analysis when we're doing looking for fraud. And it, that's because it measures components uh, between relationships between the uh, financial statements. Like, for example, if you're loaning somebody money, well, how much interest are they paying now? How much of their earnings are going toward interest, right? Uh, how much debt to equity do they have? And those are all important um, requirements. We have a lot of uh, uh, companies co have us go in and look at financial statements to, to see if they have loan covenant issues, okay? Because if they don't meet certain ratios, your risk going up when you give them a loan. So we do a lot of that too here. Now, here's kind of when we talk about uh, who uses it and, and, and you know, wh what the reasons are. Okay, the reasons for using the ratio analysis, analysis of financial statements, operational efficiency, profitability, business risk, financial risk, compare the firm to other companies or industries or, right? Like if I have an industry and I have all those ratios for the industry, I can co then compare that company to see how they're doing. Uh, the most common ratios are as follows, and you guys are pretty, you know, the quick ratio, debt to equity ratio, which I like, working capital ratio, price to earnings ratio, earnings per share, return on equity, and, and the important one for us as forensic accountants is profit margin. And the profit margin is how we usually, uh, the first one we, <laughs> we really dig down to see if there is fraud. Okay, because large fluctuations in profit margin mean there's an issue. And a lot of, we just had a company where their profit margin they alleged was 50%. The industry was 40%. So we were hired, well, we were looking at their financial statements. We noticed the difference. So we went in and we did an analysis and found out that their, their, financial, their profitability was not 50%. It was a lot less than that. So 
um, you know, and this talks a little bit about that situation we just had recently. Uh, when we suspect there's uh, financial fraud, we use this Ben Ish M score, okay? And uh, this is a, a scientist. He invented this me methodology. It uses bases that relies on uh, financial ratios. It's a mathematical model that uses eight financial weighted coefficients and identifies whether the company has manipulated its profits, okay? We've used this successfully in many, many companies. Now, this methodology is built on the assumption that companies have, that have high growth, deteriorating gross margin, rising operating expense, they have, an, uh, they have an incentive to manipulate profits. And that's kind of what that Wall Street Journal article is saying, okay? Co the, the, the financial statement fraud based on this uh, Benny's M score is going up. And it's because companies are, their margins are tightening. Even though sales are going up, you're making less money. And, you know, you can manipulate. There's various ways to manipulate. Of course, this Benny's M score looks at those, and you can see it once you do analysis, if you do it properly, that there, there is a problem here. Now, uh, here, let's just talk about the components real quickly. You know, uh, there's eight of them. Day, you know, day sales and receivables, gross margin, asset quality index, uh, current year's dividends by, divided by prior year sales, depreciation, SG&A, leverage, and uh, accruals to total assets. Now, when you have these eight variables and you add them together, okay, and here's the coefficients, and, you know, here's, you know, we have the, the letters here. You can plug it in once you get these, and you'll get a number, okay? Now, when you plug that number in, if it's greater than negative 2.22, that means there's a probability of profit mark, uh, manipulation. Now, we just had a company last week where they scored negative 1.6. Now, negative 1.6 is greater than 2.2, negative 2.2. So we looked in there, but there was some accounting errors, but there was no, we didn't think there was fraud. Now, we had one a couple months ago where they scored 2.1, and that was fraud. So, guys, listen, I just want you to be aware that financial statement of fraud exists. Uh, there's a couple methodologies that you can use. Ratio analysis, guy with the Benchy, combined with the Benchy M score. 95% um, of fraud you're going to see when, if you do it, if you uh, apply these methodologies correctly. So listen, guys, hopefully you liked the video. If you did, smash the like side. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below. One of my analysts or I will get back. We answer every all the comments on our videos. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.